welcome to another video! Today I'm bringing you my August wrap-up. I haven't done a wrap-up in so long, like I don't know how many months it's been, probably about three. I'm not gonna fill you in on what I read between that time because it's like nothing. So we're just rolling on with August and pretending that my few month reading slump never happened and we're just gonna get on with it. So, as everyone is aware, August was the month of the Newts, the second magical readathon hosted by G at Bookroast. I participated, my TBR can be found on my channel and my vlogs throughout the process can be found on my channel. So now it's time for the wrap up. Before I do the Newts wrap up, there is one other book in this wrap up that isn't part of the Newts, so I'm gonna start with that. The Quarterly Club's live stream for summer happened in August. So I finished, and didn't finish, because I DNF'd the book for that, which was God Blind by Anna Stevens. This was my pick and I couldn't even finish it. I just didn't care enough. I wasn't interested. I was expecting to be more hooked by this, but honestly it was like a remake of Game of Thrones, but not anywhere near as good and just not, not gripping or engaging at all for me. So it was a DNF at probably like 30% or something. So yeah, there is obviously a live stream for that on G's channel. I will link it down below for you. Okay, that means we can move on to the newts. Let's start off with my charms wrap up. Okay, so my charms wrap up starts off with my A in charms. My notes are over here, sorry. Um, a book with magic, and for that I read The Novice by Taran Matharu. I really enjoyed this. I think I gave it four stars in the end. Like, it didn't blow my mind. It wasn't completely astonishing, but it was a good read. I enjoyed the journey, and I look forward to reading the rest of the series. This is about a boy who discovers he can summon demons. Very magical. Lots of demons and magic and summoning. As the title would suggest, it's the Summoner series and he is a novice at summoning. <laughs> so yeah, I enjoyed it. I look forward to reading the rest of the series. Um, book number one. Book number two for charms, which would be my O, no, my E in charms, um, was a book with a cover that charmed you. For that I read A Place Called Perfect by Helena Duggan. This cover I think is beautiful. I've mentioned it on my channel before because of its beautiful cover and I hadn't got around to reading it and now I have. I gave this one three stars. It wasn't as good as I was hoping for it to be. It seemed very much like a Coraline wannabe. Like, it was good as a middle grade, kind of creepy kids book, but it just seemed a bit too much like Coraline wannabe to me. And obviously this isn't Neil Gaiman and this isn't Coraline. So to me it wasn't as good, but that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it. I did enjoy it. Three stars is still a decent rating. It just didn't stick with me. But essentially this follows Violet who moves to a new town called Perfect with her parents. Her dad is like not an optician but an eye doctor. I can't remember what he was. Um, and there's a problem in this town. Everyone has to wear glasses so the like mayor of the town hires her father to solve the problem and then her mum goes a bit weird and her dad goes missing and stuff happens. Then for my O for Charms, a book that you think will leave a mark, I read City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. This came out not that long ago. It was in Waterstones a week early. I grabbed it. I loved it. This was fantastic. Definitely left a mark, but it's Victoria Schwab, so what else would we expect from the queen that is Schwab? Fantastic. I encourage you to read it if you haven't. This follows Cassidy, who has a strange ability to step between worlds. She is a living girl who had a near-death experience, which means she can now pull back the veil to allow her to step into the world of the dead and see ghosts. And it's set in Edinburgh. It's fantastic. I gave it five stars. I don't need to say that. However, I could have done without the Harry Potter references personally, but I think a lot of other people will appreciate the Harry Potter references. Okay, so that takes us on to Defense Against the Dark Arts, which starts with the last book in a series for which I read Charmcaster by Sebastian de Castell. Now this isn't the last book in the series, but it's the last available book in the series as of now. It is the third one in what will eventually be a seven book series, I think. 
This is fantastic. This is the sequel to Spellslinger and Shadow Black. I have a review for them somewhere on my channel. And the story continues, the mystery continues, the action continues, the magic continues. I love these books a lot. <laughs> I'm still waiting for people to get on board with the hype for these. AJ's been reading them and he has been liking them, which I'm very happy about. And I just wish that more people did, to be honest. But yeah, I have loved this. I gave this one five stars. It was fantastic. I can't wait for the next one. Um, this story follows Kellen, who is a Jantep mage who can't do magic. So that's a problem for him. Um, that is kind of the plot of the first book. I won't tell you what goes on in the other ones though, because that's a major spoiler if you haven't read the first one. But um, yeah, there is a squirrel cat who is the most vicious creature, like hilariously vicious creature ever. That then takes us on to my E for Defense Against the Dark Arts, which was a foiled book. And like, can you get more foiled than Ink by Alice Broadway? Not really. This I enjoyed a whole heck of a lot more than I thought I would. I gave this one four stars. I don't know what I was expecting from it, but not what I got. And I don't really know how to explain it. The, <laughs> the extent of the blurb is quite simply, the truth will get under your skin. And that does summarize it very much. It's kind of, it's a culture where everything you do in your life gets tattooed on your skin. And then when you die, your body is flayed and you are made into a book for your family to keep and, you know, you're added to the ancestry that passes down your family, which, like, is a nice sentiment. <laughs> when our main character's dad dies, stuff doesn't all go quite to plan and uh, there is a drama. I don't want to give anything away because I feel like this book would be very easy to spoil, so I'm not, but it's not what I was expecting. Very easy read, very quick read, better than I thought it would be. And I do plan on reading the sequel to this one at some point in life. <laughs> and then for my O in Defense Against the Dark Arts, that is a book with dark in the title. I read Beyond a Dark and Shore by Jessica Leek. This was a fairy loot book that really appealed to me because of the bird on the cover. I have a weakness for birds on covers. This is about the princess of Mide, who is a Celt, who takes a Northman prisoner and then is told that the only way she can save her kingdom is to have him as an ally. It's then kind of woven in with a ton of Norse mythology, which was really cool, and then of course there is a romance. I gave this one three stars in the end. I really liked the action and the mythology part of this and uh, the, the Morrigan in it. Like, I, I like that, I like that darkness of the mythology, but the romance kind of took away from that for me. The romance was a bit quick and a bit much and took away from the, like, devastating action that was going on and the really interesting Norse mythology. So it was a bit good, a bit meh. So three stars, I think, summarises it pretty well. It's a very average book, but there were parts of it I liked more than other parts. I don't really know how to explain my thoughts on this. So that'll take us on to Divination. So for my A, a book set in the future of Divination, I read The Loneliness of Distant Beings. This was actually the first book that I read for the Newts. Wow. What a throwback to the beginning of August. This is one I picked up from Yalk. It's signed, lovely. And the beginning and the back made it sound really interesting. And then it turned into something that I really didn't want it to be and ended up kind of being a bit eh. I think I gave it two stars in the end, but the back says it's that quick, that strong, that beautiful, and is also totally impossible. Now, from the cover and the fact that it's like sci-fi, they're living on a space shuttle sort of thing, I was expecting that to be referenced to something like beautiful space-wise, like some sort of supernova that caused something, I don't know. But it was about the romance. This book was one big romance on a space show. And that's not what I wanted it to be. Like, the beginning was promising. We were told that our main character was like slightly crazy, like she clawed a metal floor so much that her nails came off and like it was a bit crazy and the society that they live in is really messed up and I was kind of like riding on that and then it just turned into a really cheesy love story and like no. 
the last 50 pages of this were really action-packed, but like the rest of the book was just totally romance heavy, just like, I love you, everything I do in my life is for you, blah 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 blah. And I'm not there for that, so nope. My E for divination is a book under 200 pages. For that, I read Lumberjanes Bonus Tracks. This is a series of just short bonus tracks from the Lumberjanes story. I think I gave this one three stars overall because I was already invested in the characters, but if I wasn't, it wouldn't have been that high because I just didn't have time to get invested in the stories that were happening. So I have to be thankful for the fact that I already knew the characters and was already invested in them. Otherwise it wouldn't have been as highly rated as it was. And it was only a three. And then for the O in Divination, we had Mythology, a book with mythology. And for any mythology read, I just go for Percy Jackson. So this is now the third Percy Jackson, which is Percy Jackson and the Titan's Curse. I've been enjoying this series, I must say. Like, I missed out on reading these as a kid, same as I missed out on reading Harry Potter as a kid. And now trying to read them both at an older age, I prefer Percy Jackson over Harry Potter. I think I gave this one four stars. I have grown to really enjoy these characters and I'm enjoying where the story is going. I have just been having a blast with it. So yeah, I liked it, four stars. We'll be continuing with the series at some point. That then leaves us with Herbology and the A in Herbology is a book with a green cover. For that, I picked up Snot Girl by Brian Lee O'Malley and Leslie Hung. I've seen some very bad reviews for this. I found it very intriguing. Not like out of this world amazing. I think I gave it a three or maybe a four star. It was interesting. It's about a blogger who is like perfect online but you never see her offline and offline she is far from perfect. And then there's kind of like a weird supernatural twist in there that was not expected and just kind of took it somewhere else. So I liked that. I liked that there was something that I wasn't expecting and I loved the art style of this. Like it's so colourful and just pretty. So yeah, I liked it. I haven't read the second one. I'm not sure if I would because I've seen some really terrible reviews for it, but then I've seen terrible reviews for this as well. So I don't know, I might, like, if you've read it and you think I should, then let me know. But yeah, this, this was all right. <laughs> the E for Herbology was then a book with illustrations for which I picked up volume eight of Lumberjanes. So I knocked out a couple of Lumberjanes in this. This one I liked a lot more than bonus tracks. It's a full volume. We had a full story. We had some cool characters. We had lots of mythology and I liked how that went this time. Like Lumberjanes is always full of like mythological creatures and stuff, but this time we had a lot of like Greek mythology and like the gods making appearances and stuff. So I was really into this. I enjoyed it a whole heck of a lot. I think I gave this one four stars, but it's definitely like one of my favoured Lumberjanes. And as I always say when I talk about Lumberjanes, it's been very up and down for me. Like some volumes are really good, some volumes really aren't. This was one of the better ones for me. I enjoyed it. Of course I plan on continuing with the series. I'm invested in Lumberjanes and I love the girls, so I will continue to read what they put out. But I'm really not into the whole switching of the art styles every now and then. Like, just pick one and stick to it. <laughs> And then my final read of The Newts and my last book for Herbology, so my O in Herbology, went out with a bang, oh my goodness, Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor. I adored this. Of course I did, I adored the first one as well. I just have fallen in love with this series and these characters. I love the story, I love everything about it. The way it's written, it's so lyrical and magical and immersive. I can understand why this wouldn't be for everyone, because I know some people really don't dig the lyrical writing, but I do. I know people love Strange the Dreamer. I like this series. I mean, I haven't finished it yet. I haven't read the third one. This is the second in the series, but I've liked this and Door of Smoke and Bone more than I liked Strange the Dreamer. And I love Strange the Dreamer, don't get me wrong on that one, but my point is Lainey Taylor is just a big thumbs up. Needless to say, I gave it five stars. I raved about it in my vlog as well, so if you've seen that, then you know what I think. But yeah, I love this. And that is that. That is 13 books read for August. 
had a cracking reading month, very proud of myself, do not anticipate doing the same in September, like that would be ridiculous, it's just not gonna happen, but I'm still gonna try my best to continue reading. I am very very hot in here and need to stop filming because I'm like melting so I'm gonna stop, but yes I've had a cracking August, I've loved doing the newts, let's hope I can keep reading in September and not fall back into a slump because that would be the worst thing ever. I've had a good time, I hope you had a good reading month, if you participated in the newts then I hope you did fantastic fantastically as well. Um, but yeah, that's that. If you've enjoyed, give us a thumbs up, chat to me down in the comments. If you've read any of these, talk to me down below about them all, let me know what you've thought, that's what this is all about, isn't it? Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!